seminar for uh, a lesson on scratch building. So Martin, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Okay, let's see if I can get my screen to share properly today. And come on, there we go. Is that working for everybody? We're all good, okay. Yes. yes. And we don't even have an error message this week, even better. I have no idea why that was there last time, but it isn't this time. Uh, this is what comes from having a custom built computer that your son builds for you. <laughs> Some days it has a mind of its own. So the basic cabin or company house number two, we're gonna do two and three tonight because there's a short set of slides for both. So we'll get, we'll get through these basic, basically a box uh, construction. And there's what we're starting with. We're not gonna start with the wood or anything. We start, I, you know, this is my scrap box rating. Uh, a TC door and a frame, a grant line window. I got a Ziploc bag of the daggone things. Um, somebody painted them, didn't use them. I bought them cheap and a smoke jacket. I think, I'm not sure where that comes from. Well, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it might be the last one or next to the last one of those I had in the box. Turner Model Works, that's where it came from, long time ago. So, hmm. okay, so this is basically an extrapolation of last week's box, little box house. So there's the door, there's the window. You can move the window around, you can put it on the sides, you can put it over here. I don't know, putting it in the back seems a little weird. Uh, the difference between this house and the one I showed last week, we're gonna put a little addition off to the side. Uh, just need to put the corner posts over here to mount the side addition. Pretty simple, this is just a scrap uh, clabbered. This, you can see it's scrap because I've glued up two pieces right here. And this has got a line on it from something that I didn't use. So once it's painted, it won't matter. Just put it together on the corners, get it, get it relatively square as best you can. Uh, measure corner to opposite corner if, you, if you're really compulsive about it. I eyeball it more often than not. Bracing at the top around the base for, for a base if I was gonna put, put, attach it to something. This is for the roof, mounting the roof. Same story here on the side pieces. These corners are put together all with goo, on the end grain and CA on the, I guess it's side grain on the uh, corner post. You have about uh, 15 seconds to get it aligned properly when you assemble using that mixture. And you'll need a scalpel or a chainsaw to get it apart later. So if you drop it, and I've been known to drop models in my own shop onto the concrete floor, they just bounce. Of course, it's O scale, so yeah, you know, they're pretty stu pretty sturdy. For some reason, I put on a board by board roof on this building. I have no idea why, other than I felt like doing it, um, just to do something different. So you just grab a, a bundle of strip wood. That's probably HO. I'm going to say four by twenty or something like that. I've got a big pile of HO strip wood that I've been slowly trying to get rid of, and the, I find the fastest way to get rid of it is to just build something out of it and incorporate it into something where no one will really notice it. It works just fine. Nobody's actually coming out with calipers and measuring my strip wood in my buildings very often. And we'll fast forward right to the very end. And I'm glad that uh, Greg talked about finishing because I got, I wanted to show something a little different on this, on the outside of this. This is something I stumbled across 15 years ago, and this is a variation of it. And I did it, I used it on uh, the pickle plant that's on my layout, which is a huge structure uh, and was about 30 pages published by the time it got into print. But what this is, that kind of yellowish color underneath there, what, what way this works is, you put a coat of Floquil Wisconsin Central Gold on a side. 
I only do one side at a time. And Wisconsin Central Gold from Floquil is a gloss paint. It's one of the few Floquil paints that's a gloss. They made about six or seven or eight. I don't know how what number it is. And I mistakenly used this for a structure once and my wife came down, looked at it, gave a slight scream of outrage and said, you can't be serious. Nobody in their right mind would paint something that color. And I said, okay, well, let me quick throw some of the mineral red on top of it. And the mineral red I had was polyscale. And the Wisconsin gold wasn't dry yet. It was uh, tacky. And I slapped it on, covered it all up, and went upstairs and had a cup of tea or two and came back down an hour later. And this is the kind of finish the entire structure broke out into. So I haven't tried every gloss paint under the sun to see what kind of other effects you can get with this, but it seems to work fairly well for this one. And you can see it's, you can tailor it a little bit by how much Wisconsin gold you put on each side. You can lighten it a little bit or put it a little heavier or let it dry a little longer, but it's certainly a paint paint interaction uh, that's making things interesting. And of course, the old drill a hole in the side with the hand drill, and I do use a hand drill. Uh, I don't know what size it is, and that's just a uh, washer out of my 632 uh, machine bolt, uh, machine screws drawer. This is tar paper, printed tar paper from Paper Creek Models. I had some of that left over from a kit that I developed a long time ago, and I think it looks pretty fair. You cut it out relatively carefully with a scalpel on, on a piece of cardboard. There's three or four layers here and you just glue it down with some carpenter's glue a little bit at a time. And one, what's nice about this also is underneath of this, these individual boards, this is not clean and flat and perfectly smooth. It's got a lot of ripple in it that you're not necessarily seeing in the photo, but it, it, it's, it's got some ups and downs and all over the place which is not unlike what you see in a real building. And there's another view from the other side with the little shed. There must have been a lot of weather on this side. This must be the north side. Uh, <clears throat> but it came out a little heavier crackle than I thought it would. But I never know exactly what I'm going to get until I come back after I've had a cup of tea. So that, that's a technique you can use. I suppose you can probably adapt that to a gloss under and a, a, a gloss oil solvent based paint undercoat with a, a, a water based uh, top coat. At one time, the other trick that I would use with this, the first thing I would put down on was to, was to seal the entire surface with a coat of Minwax. I didn't care what color it was because I was going to paint over it anyhow, but it was to seal the wood to really force this solvent in the yellow paint to stay at the top and not soak into the wood. So it would interact even more aggressively with the uh, poly scale. So third house. Gosh, look at that. It's the same smoke jack, the same door. Oh, I got two windows. I must have gotten, I was getting desperate. I got to get rid of another window, two, two windows in one building. It's a little bit bigger building. It's going to have a little bit of a porch. So that's what this cutaway here is, and this extra board or two here. We're gonna have a little bit of a front porch. And we put it together, basically the same thing as before. Turn the uh, roofing angles around a different direction and the same bracing, hold the roof on, whatever, the same with the same clabbered, holding it all together with these corner boards that are just goo and CA, holds it all together nicely and stiffly. You have to just be, have to, just have to be able to care, be careful on measuring, making sure this adds up with this little bit of uh, overlapping here. And this got a floor with a pair of ridge poles just to nail the roof down to. Didn't want to get too complicated because we're not going to take the roof off later anyhow. No one's going to see what it looks like from the inside unless you've got a 
some way of drilling a hole and getting a micro camera inside from the floor. It's a little too inventive for me. And just putting it together, you can see from another angle, I actually went back and put a little bit of scribe siding on the inside, just in case someone just does look up inside. Gotta have that covered. I don't know if I worry too much about porch roofs and things like that, because once it's on your layout, unless your track is really high, your layout height is really high, nobody's gonna see underneath the roof. I mean, unless they're children and looking up. But most adults, you're gonna to to get down on your hands and knees by the side of somebody's layout and look up at the roof of the buildings. And if it's five feet or two feet back off the edge, they can't see it anyhow. So it's really not that important. Now, if you're making a contest model, that's another story. Then I wouldn't even be using clabbered. I'd be doing board by board, make your own clabbered. And that's, that's so much fun. Not. And okay, so a, a corner post, we paint it all. I have no idea what color green that was. I think that was the bottle of green that I finished up last uh, today. Painting my O scale version of the uh, gray house trim. And I, I kill the bottle of paint so I can celebrate one more bottle of poly scale gone. Uh, this is just builders in scale tar paper. Just apply it a layer at a time. Carpenter's glue. It's over one thirty second uh, basswood sheet. And just bend down the corners over the edges. I have no idea what the rest of these colors are, but they're all poly scale because uh, unless it's warm enough, out to take something outside and paint it. I don't use a solvent based paint indoors or I get yelled at a lot. Today was up to 70 degrees. I was out in the out in the driveway painting. I'll be I'll be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Supposed to get to 75. And you turn around, I put a little some floor joists underneath the floor, gave them a coat of paint. That's some gray of some sort. I have no idea what it is. But to wrap it around, it's pretty much pretty much a box with an indentation in it with a door and two windows. And there's the roof again. You do want to put this uh, cap off the uh, ridge with some tar paper. Otherwise, it's going to rain inside. Don't ask me how I know. And we'll stop there. We zip right along. That's as far enough as we need to go. And I'm done. So I can unshare unless somebody really wants me to go back and look at a slide. Martin, I have a question. Yes, the, sir. Uh, the drying time, does it work with coffee instead of tea? Depends how fast you make coffee. I mean, a cup of tea is a minute and a half in the microwave, a couple of scoops of sugar, a dash of margarita, margarita mix to get the lime juice in and, and more sugar. Five minutes, you know. I'm not in that much of a hurry though. I don't run around fast. Actually, I'll probably have five other models going anyhow on the bench. So, you know, while the glue's drying, while the paint's drying, while something's going on, I'm not standing there watching it. It's not, the, it's not very entertaining. I'm usually somewhere else in the shop doing a different model. And I'll stop sharing. No questions. No inquisition. The um, the tar the tar paper that you used on the roof. Yeah. Uh, where it, it was from another manufacturer. You managed to get a really good worn edge on that without it looking like it was torn by full size fingers. Yeah, that's 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 the number eleven scalpel. Yeah, very carefully go around the. Uh, it, it it prints like that. It's actually printed out like that. And you, you just go around the edge with a scalpel real slow. I like to cut that out with the paper on top of a piece of cardboard. So you, you can feel it going through the paper into the cardboard, as opposed to on something hard like a piece of wood. You're not, then you can't feel the blade actually penetrating. So you know you've cut through it because you don't want to have to separate it and tear it later. You get a little nub and then that's white and you don't, and it doesn't look right. Well, that looked beautiful. Anything else?
those are those are simple things, you know. So I think next week I'm not going to do a structure. I'll skip a week on structures and I'll go back to some freight cars because the next. Yeah, I think the next structure I have would be a little bit larger, but it's time to move up to a, a bigger box with a roof on it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Martin. We really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Glad to do it.